DaVinci is fast becoming the most popular video editing app out there. But many people complain about the lack of effects and plugins versus the mountain of options in apps like Premiere Pro. So I wanted to help you get started with the essential plugins you need to make your workflow super smooth in DaVinci. These aren't super specific plugins that you'll only use for that one project. These are tools that I use on literally every single edit that I do. There's two main plugin packs that I use, Editor Collection by Jake Whip and Magic Animate version free from Mr. Alex Tech. The tools included in these are unbelievably useful and simple to use. So let me show you some of them in action within a real edit from one of my previous YouTube videos. So here we are in one of my previous YouTube edit timelines. As you can see, it looks might look a bit intimidating or messy, but there's a reason why every single clip is in here. And I will show you how I use some of these effects within a typical YouTube edit of mine. So the way I made this is the, a combination of using my two most used effects, which would be uh, Magic anime and then one effect from the editor collection and in this case it's whip zoom basically as you can see whip zoom comes in two flavors it comes as either a generator so an actual clip in your uh timeline that you can place or it can be an effect that you place on a clip itself a lot of time with zooms i always find it's better to have it as a generator because then it affects everything underneath it rather than just on this specific clip so let's just play it back you can see what whip zoom is doing here it's pumping in like this and then and, and that's basically the animation so it's adding motion blur it's adding the zoom in to, to this spot and that's what whip zoom is doing right here and then for the starbucks logo effects we have magic animate happening so essentially what it's doing i've checked this zoom control here so it's zooming in and zooming out and i've told it hey when this clip happens let the animation take 0.27 seconds and you can mess around with all of these sliders to suit your needs so it basically just means that you can get really really quick and easy animations like this with barely any effort because the only way to do this otherwise it would you would have to keyframe and keyframing would just take a long time <laughs> versus this and just putting on these effects tweaking them a little bit is just way faster and why don't i even just remake it for you right now so you can see what it's like in action so let's get rid of this let's get rid of the effects from both of these. So now nothing's happening. This just appears. This just appears and then that goes away. This is a GIF by the way, that's why it's moving. It's not an effect that I put on. So this is just normal PNG and then a GIF. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into effects, find whip zoom and drag it on. And then let's line it up so it goes for the full length. And then you can see right away, it's just doing that, which is not what we wanna do. So we wanna change the position. So you go pivot and then you drag this this up to wherever you want it and we want it to go roughly there so now you see it straight away it's pumping in like that if we wanted to make it more zoomed in you can mess around with that slider the end size or if you want to mess around with how quick it does it you can move this animation length down put in some motion blur just to make it look a bit more cinematic and then right away once it renders you've got this super pro looking zoom in effect right so You've got, you've got to keep in mind that with these effects, usually, especially if you add motion blur, you do need to wait till your um, timeline caches a little bit, but normally it doesn't take very long. It depends on how many effects you have stacked, but yeah, then you've got this super cool pumping effect. And you can also do the same thing uh, on the out. So yeah, in this instance, you can see it zooms back out and I can turn that on and off, whether I click on out or in up to me really I, I have so much control over how i want this effect to look that's the beauty of it so next we want to animate the icons so the way to do that is we want to go up and go to effects and find magic animate v3 so let's drag that on and yeah as i said before this is an effect not a generator so it actually exists on the effects tab in the clip itself in the fusion little tab over here so what we want to do now is uh nothing's happening at the moment because we've not told it how we want to animate it so what we want to do is we want to go zoom zoom in zoom out so right away you can see that it it's zooming in but it's zooming in from my chest for some reason so what we want to do is we want to click here and then we want to choose change the pivot to roughly here it's roughly where we want it and that means that it'll grow in size from that position so it'll come like that 
And then same thing when it goes out, right? I think it's a bit too slow now. So let's make the animation faster. So right away, you've got this super cool looking effect. Another amazing thing that I love about a magic anime and one little kind of sprinkle of effect goodness that I love about it is mids. So you can enable a shake. Usually it's too much if you put um, one on. So let's say about three. And then what we want to do is we want to turn down the in and out time. So it starts straight away. And then right away, you can see it kind of like has a little shake to it. Like let's increase that so you can, you can really see the difference. Yeah, so you see now that it animates in and then it shakes around, which just, it just makes it look way more alive and organic and not just like a static image and i just think it looks looks way more professional this way and then at the end it goes away so now we want to add another instance of magic anime on this one what we can do we can just copy and paste it actually so let's go plugins or rather fusion effects because it's just a fusion effect and then it'll come up and then yeah right away both of these are animated it's pretty crazy you probably want to add motion blur on this one because uh, it looks a bit odd at the moment. So let's just turn on motion blur. There we go. You see like you can increase the quality. So it just looks a bit smoother. Probably also on this one as well because it uh, animates out. So we want to put a bit of motion blur on this one as well. Let's wait till it caches. I am really excited for the day when like caching is just like, like that. That'll be amazing. Oh, maybe with the M8 MacBook, it'll do that. Let's play this back. Looking very nice. And it's gone. Uh, actually doesn't really animates out too quick there, but you know. We can fix that. So yeah, that's basically it, right? Like that didn't take me very long at all to, to get something super professional. And the cool thing about especially Magic Anime is that you can save these as presets. So you can create a zoom in effect in a very specific place or an animation with a logo or whatever you want to do, save it. And then you can just drag it on as a preset. So it's just going to save you so much time to use both of these in tandem together, just making effects that you just reuse for every single video. It just makes life so much easier rather than keyframing. Like I just got so frustrated with other editing apps and also DaVinci before I knew these things existed and they just make editing so much quicker, so much easier, way quicker to tweak stuff as well. Cause like if you do an animation with these and you want to like move the position and stuff, it's just a bit of a pain to like mess around with multiple keyframes versus this very easy to use UI plugin that just makes everything so much easier. Another one that I use quite a lot from the editor collection is a uh, whip pivot. So essentially you can use it in tandem with whip zoom to have your image like pan across to another point. So in this instance, we're having it zoom in and then it moves to the left and then like that's the animation. And it's super cool because yeah, essentially what you do, I'll remake this so we, so we can see how it's done. So we have the same thing. We have a zoom happening here. I'm telling it, hey, zoom in here. And then with whip pivot, what we're going to do is we're going to go bow. We're going to put it there. And now it looks weird because like it's going blah. So what you've got to do is essentially with whip pivot, you have a start pivot and then end pivot. So what we've got to do is we've got to tell whip pivot the inf some of the information from the zoom. So this zoom ends at 1.3 size. So we need to copy and paste that. Then we need to also tell it, hey, the pivot point for the zoom. So like pivot is for the zoom is essentially this is where we're gonna end the frame like this is where we're zooming in just wanted to point out here that i made this way more difficult for myself than i needed to because there's a way easier way to copy these attributes all i actually needed to do was click copy end and that would copy both the pivot and the end size of this whip zoom and then once i'm in whip pivot i could just hit paste star and then it would both copy over the size from whip zoom and the start pivot which would mean that i didn't have to individually go in and hit command c to copy and paste both the x and the y axis in the way that i did it in this tutorial so yeah hit the copy end in the whip zoom and then hit the paste start in the whip pivot and it'll make it way easier and then now you can see like you don't get this weird jump anymore but we now we need we need to tell um we need to tell whip pivot where we want to go to so we want to go to the left over here right so that means that when we go here we go here super cool to get really you know bezier curved easing scans across a screen um, and then, yeah, again, you can mess around with everything here, the easing, the speed, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to do multiple instances of this, you can, you can either turn it so it goes out. So it goes left in this case, then it goes back to its original position. Or uh, what you can do is you can turn off off and then we can make multiple instances of it. So we'll tell it to go here. It'll pan left, 
probably needs to be a bit shorter because it because it hasn't quite completed its move yet by the time we get to the next clip so let's go 13 and then again we want to go back into here we want to copy the end pivot so the end pivot is there that goes where the start pivot is and then we'll tell it hey end back over here and let's just make it shorter again because it's not going to complete its move in time and then when we play it but you got the idea right it's so it's so simple and easy to to get like cool effects like this within your edit that barely took any time and you just get faster and faster as you use it so i do end up using that quite a lot another one that i probably use maybe the most alongside whip zoom is whip text and as you can see this is a really cool simple text effect where you have all these controls just type in whatever you want choose the font etc etc and then you can animate it in a similar way to how you can do with magic animate so you can change like the size the position and have it come in from a completely different area like down the bottom like that or for instance we want it to come from the opposite side so let's do basically so it comes in from there so you can mess around and do really cool effects you can i think you can yeah you can even have it have it do like tracking so we can make the start tracking really wide and then we can have it end like that probably looks better if we're not like doing a crazy uh, zoom because it kind of gets lost in it but you get the idea like there's so much you can do with animations and effects you know enable a follower so you can do all this crazy follower effects cool stuff like this like <laughs> it's just crazy how much you can do with this just one plugin itself like it just looks so cool already i'd say like 90 percent, probably more of the text that you see in my videos are are used with web text so yeah this plugin is amazing and yeah, I, oh, it's so good. All of these are amazing. I use them on every single video. So that's definitely one that I, I use a lot and it's gonna be so useful for you if you if you use it for your videos and you have a lot of text and motion graphics. And you know, it just means that you don't have to mess around in Fusion. And cause it's just a lot of stuff that is simple enough that a plugin like these can do the job for you. And, and Fusion can be like for the more really heavy effects. And also you can use a lot of these effects in Fusion. So you can combine the best of both worlds where you can have like the motion graphics um, with, you know, the other stuff that just requires a simple keyframed effect like this, but without using keyframes, instead you're using a plugin to to get rid of the, the bane of keyframes all the time. And, and a final one that I use a lot is something called Whip Highlight. So Whip Highlighter is essentially a way to kind of emphasize things that you want to emphasize on screen. So we put it on here as a generator, like with Whip Zoom. And then we, what we want to do is we have this like window here, which is essentially a preview of what we're going to see. So what we want to do is we want to go window one and then we want to highlight this guy, this guy on the this circus guy. I probably want to turn the animation length down because it's quite a quick clip. And then when we turn our preview off, what's going to happen is you're going to get this zoomed in highlight effect of that element and it's going to blur the background and also drop the opacity of the background a little bit. And then, yeah, it can animate straight out like that. This is really, really useful, not so much for something like this, but if you're doing a tutorial video and you want to highlight a window just to emphasize to your viewer a bit more like what you're doing with the controls, you've actually seen it lots of times in this very edit, <laughs> like many, many times. So it's super useful and you can have multiple windows as well. You don't need to have just the one. You can have up to four windows, which is pretty crazy. I only really use this for, tu for tutorials, but it just makes a tutorial way more engaging to watch and just I actually feel like I learn better <laughs> when I see a YouTube video that ha has an effect similar to this. I definitely just feel like it emphasizes a lot more and, and makes it easier for me to consume and understand uh, what the tutorial is trying to explain to me in the first place. So there's a bunch of other effects within the editor collection, things like whip cam, whip marker. I do use them sometimes, uh, but what, nowhere near as many as as the ones that I've just showed you. So, you know, the fact that you get all of these and depending on the kind of content you make, maybe you're gonna end up using them way more than I use the other ones. But it's just amazing how many awesome tools you have in this editor collection. Like, it's just wish it was made earlier, I really do. It's so annoying. All the hours I wasted without having this. 
<laughs> As I was editing this video, a brand new version of Editor Collection came out, including a new plugin called Whip Path, where you can make really cool line animations on your footage. And there was also a bunch of updates to the existing plugins that exist within the actual pack. So it's pretty cool. This thing constantly keeps getting updated, tweaked and improved upon to just make it even better every single time we use it. I've left links in the description for both of these apps if you want to check them out and pick them up for yourself. The link for the Editor Collection plugins is an affiliate link. So if you guys were thinking about buying it anyway, and after seeing this video, you're like, oh my God, give it to me now, then uh, I get a little bit of a kickback from that and that helps support the channel. So yeah, feel free to, to purchase it through that link and, and and help help a, help a filmmaker out. If you wanna level up your productivity and focus as a video editor, you should definitely check out this video right here where I talk you through the five habits of highly productive editors. Hit that subscribe button, because if you don't, I'm gonna transition you back to the 1960s where editing was as simple as taping together film by hand. See you in the next video.